there. I am back today with something super, super fun. I, um, if you've been keeping up, I recently released a series of doll patterns. Um, two babies with clothes and a diaper and four animals, cat, mouse, pig, and cow. These are the Phoebe ragdoll patterns. And I wanted to make them a cute little sleeping bag like so, but I couldn't just stop at one size of sleeping bag. So I went ahead and made a medium size and a large size. And so I'm releasing this pattern in my Etsy shop where you can also find the Phoebe rag dolls. And I decided to make a video tutorial to go along with it. So before I go any further, make sure you check out the link below for my pattern shop because you will need the pattern for this. And also check out my blog, pincutsewstudio.com, where I have all kinds of beginner friendly sewing content and tutorials. Um, and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything important. Okay, so let's talk about these sleeping bags. This small size will fit small dolls. This Phoebe doll is 10 inches without the hair. Um, so any doll that's 10 to 12 inches, this small one will fit. This is the one I'm going to be demonstrating on, but they're all made the same way. Then this medium sleeping bag fits any doll the same size as about like Bitty Baby or a Build-A-Bear, the standard size Build-A-Bear or a Cabbage Patch doll. So any doll 14 to 16 inches. And then this one is made to fit the 18 inch American Girl dolls or any 18 inch doll. I think it will also fit um, the larger size from Build-A-Bear, but I have not tested that, but I think, I think it would. So those are the three sizes. They're all made in the same way. And I wanted to do this because it will help you build some quilting skills. It will help you learn to do a binding by machine. There's no hand sewing in this entire project. And it will be a very fun gift for you to make to go along with your Phoebe rag dolls or with, or just, just gift anyone who loves dolls because my girls would have loved these when they were little. Not just my girls, my son too. He loved his Build-A-Bear. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is click the link below and go get, get the pattern. It comes with all of these pages, step-by-step -step photo instructions and the templates that you need for the pocket. And let's see, I think, I think that's all you need. This has in there how much fabric you need, how much batting and how much binding fabric. But for the little guy, just find some scraps or a half yard will do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. My instructions say for the small sleeping bag, I need to cut my pieces. Let's see. Okay, my base piece is gonna be 10 by 14. And then I need a pocket piece that's 12 by 12. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter and mat. I actually have a whole video on how to cut with a rotary cutter and mat. If you don't know how, go find that. It's part of my beginner quilting series. Okay, so I want it to be 10 inches wide. If you have a directional print, make sure it's going the right way. By 14 inches long. We're actually gonna trim this up a little bit more after we do the quilting part. So if it's not totally perfect right now, it's okay. Okay, and then I need a 12 inch piece, 12 inch square for my pocket. You could mix and match your fabrics. You could use a different fabric for the pocket. You also need a backing fabric. On most of them, I use a contrasting fabric for that. Like on this one, see I used green. But on this one that I'm making right now, I'm just gonna use the same fabric for the backing too. And then I'll get some, I'll do something fun for the trim. I mean the binding. Okay, so here I have 
my base and my pocket. This is gonna get cut down later too using the templates that come in the pattern. But let me first show you how to quilt these pieces. So notice I did not cut my backing the same size. I need a piece of cotton batting. Okay, here's my batting. I'm going to put my base down on it. You can iron it if you have a lot of wrinkles. Then, oh my gosh, I lose my scissors in every single video that I make. Found them, okay. You're gonna cut roughly around this, leave about an inch on all sides. Smooth that out. Let me center it a little bit better. I use this batting called Warm and Natural, which I'll link to in the notes. Then you wanna get your backing fabric that you have not cut yet. And you're gonna put that face down. And you're gonna put this on top of it like this. So you've just made a quilt sandwich with these three pieces. And then you're gonna cut roughly around that. Okay, then this is how you do quilting lines. Let me smooth it from this side too. Make sure everything's nice and smooth so you don't get any puckers or bubbles. I'm going to place pins at random. For a large quilt, you use specific kind of safety pins, but with a small project like this, you're not really at risk of stabbing yourself too much if you just use straight pins, so that's what I do. You're gonna just place them all over the piece randomly. Ooh, that's bent. Until you feel like everything is going to stay put. Then I like to quilt mine in a diagonal grid. You could choose to do horizontal lines, you could do some free motion quilting, but this is what I think looks pretty cute. So instead of marking mine with a marking tool, I really love to use uh, painter's tape to just mark my first line. Ooh, I'm running low. So I simply mark my first diagonal line this way. And I only have to mark the first one because after that, I will use that one as a guide to space my lines one inch apart. So I'm gonna start in the center and do one inch lines all the way to the corner. Then I'll flip it and then start on the next spot and go all the way to this corner. Then I will make lines in this direction also. So if you've never quilted before, you definitely need a walking foot for your machine. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, here's what a pretty universal one looks like. It attaches to your machine. This fits over the screw that holds your needle in. And this, is a seam guide that comes with it. This will help you get your lines one inch, I think I put that on upside down, one inch away from each other. So this is what it looks like. And I will link to some universal ones below. You definitely, if you're quilting, need to use a walking foot because this is what keeps all the layers moving together at the same rate instead of this one bunching up and you're gonna have lots of lines and puckers. So these are not expensive if you don't have one. I'll link to some in the notes. Um, my machine, a FAF, has a built-in one, so I don't need to attach this. Mine always uses it. So what I do, because my machine doesn't have one of these guides, I tape a chopstick <laughs> to my sewing machine vertically one inch away from where my needle is so that I can make one inch apart lines. So it's not scientific, but it's what's been working for me. So I'm going to go quilt this and my pocket piece, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, I finished um, going I finished going in one direction. Now I'm going to go in the other direction. You can see I started sewing and stopped sewing off onto my batting. So you can go right off of it. And you don't need a back stitch or anything like that. You do want to check periodically to make sure you're not getting any puckers back here. You may need to like sort of smooth out and repin and then obviously remove your pins as you go. So I don't need pins now because my Seam, my stitches are already holding it all together. So I'm just gonna retape and I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna sew lines this way now. Okay. That's better. Okay. 
I have quilted both my base and my pocket piece. I barely had enough backing, but it worked out. So now we need to cut them to size. The pattern tells you what size to cut each base for each size. So I'm gonna cut this, I think it's nine and a half by, yeah, nine and a half by 13 and a half. So to do that first, I'm gonna make a straight edge. Then I'm going to put that here and use that straight edge to straighten this edge. Things get wonky when you quilt them, so that's why we leave extra and then trim it to size. So now I can come over here, trim this to nine and a half, and this to 13 and a half. Okay, so now it looks like this. So cute already. Okay, for the pocket though, I'm going to trim so it's flush here. Then your pattern comes with some template pieces. So if you're making this small like I am, you just need this piece and I'll cut this out. If you're making the medium or large, you need this piece. And then when you cut it out, you'll attach either this one for the large or this one for the, for the medium. But I'm making this small, so let me cut this out real quick. All right, you can see here it says place this edge on fold. Okay, so I'm gonna fold my quilted piece like so. I'm going to place my pattern piece on it. Stick a couple of pins. going to cut out around it. Okay, now my pocket looks like this. Alrighty, the next step is we're going to bind the top of this pocket. So this is where I'm going to teach you how to do a quilt binding all by machine, no hand sewing. I think I'm going to use this fabric. And because our piece is curved, we need to use bias strips. So that means instead of cutting them straight, we're gonna cut them on the bias like this. So we only need one strip for this pocket binding and it doesn't need to be that long for this size. So I'm just going to first cut there and then flip it. Binding pieces need to be cut two and a quarter inches wide. So here's two and a quarter. Okay, make sure it's long enough, and it is. I'm gonna go press this in half lengthwise. Okay, you can see that a bias strip has a lot of stretch to it, and that's what helps it get around these curves. So on the back of your pocket piece, and this would have been easier to show you if I had used a different fabric for the back, but I didn't. So if you did, make sure you're doing this on the back, whatever side you wanna be the back. We're gonna sew it to the back and then we're gonna flip it around to the front. So you're going to go sew this in a quarter inch seam along the raw edge. Leave the overhang, don't trim that off yet. Okay, here's what it looks like on the back of my pocket. I'm going to now, because we're gonna flip this over here, to help everything lay flat, I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch inside of my seam allowance all the way along it. This is kind of something optional, but this is what I do now for quilt bindings ever since I learned it, because it really does help so much. Whether you're hand binding or machine binding, the zigzag helps everything flatten out. Okay, now we're going to flip this over and bring our binding around to the front. And we're going to go edge stitch this close to the folded edge so that it covers our seam line here. It's going to look nice and neat. If you're a beginner and you, ha you are having trouble edge stitching this close to that folded edge and you're finding it's looking messy, you can also use a zigzag stitch to finish and top stitch. And that looks cute and adds interest and it's not cheating, I promise. <laughs> All right, see how nice and neat that looks? See how close to the edge I got? If you do choose to do a zigzag, don't do it way up here. You wanna do it down here so that it's 
zigging past the binding and zagging on the binding. Okay, now I can trim my binding flush with the sides. Next step is to attach the pocket to the base on the front side, so both sides facing up. You can see this is not the same. That's because this is meant to pouch out from the center like this. So, where are my clips? With your pins or clips, I'll link to these below because they're really handy. You're going to clip first the bottom and then clip up each side. So the edges are flush with each other, but this is not flush and flat. It is intended to be a pouch like that. Okay, so to hold this in place, I'm gonna go use a basting stitch, a long machine stitch, and baste around the edges. All right, only a few steps left. Next thing to do is we're gonna round the corners. So you need to use a glass or other round object, a cup rim, I mean. I'm just gonna use my tape. I'm gonna trace around it. It's okay if I'm using pencil because these edges are gonna be bound anyway. So it will not show. Obviously don't use like a Sharpie. <laughs> that will bleed in the wash. I'm gonna round my edges and then trim them. All right, so all we have left to do is to bind the entire thing. Make sure you start on the back. Every time I do something like this, I always have to take some binding out because I forget to do it on the back. Okay. So I'm gonna cut some more bias strips. And I'll show you how to join them together to make one long bias strip. Clear up my mess. Okay, so I'm gonna keep making strips two and a quarter inches wide. So to join these together, you want to straighten the edges so they're no longer triangular. Then you're going to place one down like this and the other right sides together, you're gonna to place it like this. It needs to have an overhang of about a quarter inch. Then you place a pin here. You can draw this if you need to. You're gonna sew a line diagonally from corner to corner. Okay, so it should look like this. Then you trim this off, including the little dog ears. And when you open it, it should be totally straight with a diagonal seam. You can, of course, make binding by just joining end to end straight, but this helps reduce bulk when you're going around. So you wanna sew enough strips to go all the way around your sleeping bag, plus several more inches. So I'm gonna join this one on there too. Okay, now I should have enough, and I'm gonna go press this in half lengthwise. Okay, you can see I've pressed this in half. Now, on the leftmost end, because this is a continuous binding, we don't want any raw edges. Before you finish folding in half, you're going to fold this end up at a 45 degree angle before you finish, so it will look like this. Okay, so then on the back of your sleeping bag, down here at the bottom, you're going to start stitching this on in a quarter inch seam, but you're not gonna start at the end here. You're gonna place it here and you're gonna start about right here. And then you're just gonna curve it around. If you have trouble with these curves, you can snip into your binding as you come to it, not past a quarter inch, and then see how easily it turns now and then you just keep going. But when you come back around and get here, stop. Don't sew any of this yet. Okay, I stopped so I can show you what to do. Normally I would just do this while I'm sitting there at the machine. But my I came around to my end and it's loose and this is loose. Now I'm going to kind of gauge where this will tuck in and I want to trim about an inch past that 
that diagonal, whoops, about, about an inch past that diagonal fold. Then I'm going to open this up, tuck this inside of it, so it lays flat, and then fold it back over. Get it all flat in there, and then I can go finish my seam. Okay, so I finished sewing on my binding, and then I went ahead and zigzagged around the edges. This is even more useful step on this part because you have the extra bulk of the pocket and it's binding right here. So last step, just like we did on the pocket, we're going to bring this to the outside, I mean to the right side, fold it over, and we're going to go top stitch it down, even with a either with a straight stitch or your trusty zigzag stitch. And that will be the end. You can clip yours if you want to. I don't. I just fold it over with my hands as I go. Ta-da! It's all done and it's so sweet. I love this little size. Now you can choose one of your little Phoebe dolls to go in it. How about the kitty? So cute with this fabric. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hop over and grab the pattern at the Pin Cut Sew Studio Etsy shop. Check out the other patterns. Make sure you grab your Phoebe doll patterns while you're there. They are awfully cute. And they all come with different clothes so they can be mixed and matched. You can get the entire set or you can choose the babies or two animals at a time. I have a pig and cow or cat and mouse. Um, this one has a little cute diaper on. So all of those patterns are included and I have also made a video of this baby version with the sleep sack, so that's helpful. And I believe I made a video for these clothes too. So even if you're a beginner or if you're gonna sew these with kids, I made the videos just for you. <laughs> So also be sure and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other sewing content, pincutsewstudio.com or find me on Instagram at pincutsew and be sure and show me the things you make with my patterns. See you later.